Happy Monday, everyone. We made it to the beginning of a new week, and I know I'm starting to feel better. <laughs> Have we heard this before? But uh, the latest affliction, anyway. But uh, God is good, and I'm just grateful for another day of life. And so today we're reading in Acts 21 and 22, and I'm Denise Pass with Seeing Deep Ministries, where we see deep in a shallow world and overcome the battles of the mind with the Word of God. So what a joy to be here today and reading in Acts today. Oh, I was convicted because really I think a lot of times we can accept Christ and accept the salvation and then we just kind of think we get our marching orders and just go forward. But we are to be in a relationship with God where we're listening to Him and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And that's what I really got from today's reading, being led by the Spirit. So God has given His Holy Spirit, but we often neglect his presence. Stop and think about that for a minute. Neglect the presence of God that is within us once we've accepted Christ. God wants to lead his people, but there can be a spiritual resistance that prevents us from being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Listening to the Holy Spirit guides us through life's challenges and gives us wisdom but quenching the holy spirit keeps us from tremendous blessing in our lives and don't we see this sometimes even in church you know the holy spirit there's just will fill you you have these ideas and you just want to worship god and maybe a grumble still skin next to you is trying to impede that right and so we've got to be sensitive to the holy spirit and not let anyone else affect that and by sensitive to the Holy Spirit, I mean, we're listening to his direction in our life. You know, if we're going to lift our hands and worship God, that's obviously a response in the spirit. And we don't want to let anyone quench that. So we learn about Paul's conversion today, his ex conversion experience and his persecution, severe persecution we read about today, that he endured. And we also learn about how attentive he was to the Holy Spirit's voice. Now, if you're knocked off your horse and <laughs> you kind of have a voice booming from heaven, I think it would get any of our attention, right? But others were also speaking into his life. And this is when it is hard to hear clearly. Acts 21 verse 4 says, We sought out the disciples and stayed there seven days. Through the Spirit, they told Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Now this is a tricky verse. Through the the Spirit, they told Paul not to go. And yet, Paul arrives at a different decision. You know, in our life, sometimes people will speak into our life, and God does lead others to speak into our life. But ultimately, we're accountable to hear directly from God as well. And so, um, I know when I was first saved back in 1988, I kind of was like, just tell me what to do, Lord, and I'll do it. Sort of almost Paul-esque here. Um, Pauline, I should say. But God wants us to be listening and to seek him out. And so being led by the Spirit, to follow what has already been revealed. So right near the beginning of chapter 21, we have the disciples being led by the Spirit, the mention of four daughters who prophesy, and a prophet named Agabus who warned Paul of coming persecution. But Paul followed the Spirit, what the Spirit spoke to him, and he reminded the people to first listen to what has already been revealed. You see, if we're wanting the Holy Spirit to speak in our life, we need to be listening to what the Holy Spirit has already revealed, God's Word. And so if we aren't listening and obeying God's Word, how can we think that we will listen to the Holy Spirit and obey, right? And so Paul says in Acts 21, 25, with regard to the Gentiles who have believed, we've written a letter containing our decision that they should keep themselves from food, sacrifice to idols, from blood, from what is strangled, and from sexual immorality. Why did Paul say this? Well, there were people who were adherents to Jewish law, some called Judaizers, who were basically saying that the Gentiles had to do the Jewish, do it the Jewish way. You know, you've got to follow these laws because we do, and this is what you should do. And so this was a challenging time in the life of the church where you have this new sect, if you will, Christianity, and you've got that merging with the Jewish faith. And let's just say it probably wasn't so pretty sometimes. 
But Paul is saying, this is what you should do. And so I think in our lives, how can we apply that to us? Because we have different denominations today, right? We've got people who say, you should do it this way. We got the corner of the market on the Christian faith. You should do it that way. You know, um, we should be people who are in our word. We should be like the brands. And that's what we're doing this year. And we should also be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I appreciate that Paul gave a leadership in this. Uh, it was tricky to do so because people were getting angry with him. You know, wait, you're Jewish, but wait, you're speaking to the Gentiles? You know, so there was a, it was a challenging time. And so being led by the Spirit, uh, obviously what is revealed, but then also not by human reasoning or fear. Sometimes when you're trying to make a decision, aren't you just wanting to know God's will? Lord, just show me what to do. And sometimes what we do in those times, what I do, is I'll look for biblical principles. Has God spoken, you know, may not be specific, Denise should do this, um, or Pamela should do that. No, but we'll see principles in scripture that can lead us if a decision is not wise, that's one way. But also sometimes you'll get this sense, this peace, that yes, this is the way going it. This is what you should do. So uh, Acts 21, verses 13 through 14, it says, Then Paul replied, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Since he would not be persuaded, we said no more except the Lord's will be done. This is Paul responding to believers who are saying they're following the Spirit. And the Spirit says, don't go to Jerusalem. And Paul's saying, don't break my heart. I don't want to leave you, but I'm going to go die. I'm willing to die for Jesus. Paul felt like God was telling him to go to Jerusalem. You know, so how do you, what do you come away with from that? Could it be that Paul was warned so he was prepared, you know, and it wasn't necessarily to tell him not to go. This was how the believers defined it was you're not supposed to go because we heard from God, but maybe it was a warning, right? I know sometimes God prepares me. Um, and gives me a heads up about things that are coming. And I just need my heart to be in a good place to be prepared for that. So the spirit speaks to his people and he spoke through prophets to warn Paul, but Paul went for it anyway. We must be led by the Holy spirit, not by fear. And then being led by the spirit, how to hear God speak. A couple of things I saw in Paul's response. Of course, he was persecuting the Christians when he was called, right? And again, it was a radical, you can't help but pay attention. But God had Paul's attention. Does he have ours? I know uh, he has more of my attention lately with some of the hard things I've been going through. But it doesn't always take a hard thing to get our attention. Sometimes God moves in such mysterious and amazing ways. But sometimes it takes hard circumstances to get our attention. But will we listen when God has our attention? Paul listened and he surrendered. Acts 22, 6 through 10. As I was traveling and approaching Damascus about noon, an intense light from heaven suddenly flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? He said to me, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, the one you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but they did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. Hey there, Robin. So it's one thing to listen and another thing to follow. And other people aren't going to hear for you. You have a relationship with God. Doesn't mean that God won't use them to speak truth into your life. But God wants to talk to you. God wants a relationship with you and with me. That's unique. So being led by the Spirit, one way is by simply obeying God's voice. And so Paul, as we continue on in verse 10, said, I said, what should I do, Lord? The Lord said to me, get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told everything you have been assigned to do. So Paul shared his testimony with the mob in Jerusalem who were trying to kill him. So after this salvation, God just uses Paul in a mighty way. And here, back fast forward to where we were. I'm skipping around here today, you can see. But Paul decides to go to this angry mob in Jerusalem, even though people told him not to. 
They were trying to kill him. It was brutal. Let's look at the scripture of the day that details some of this and a message that was specific to Paul as he recounted his salvation story. Uh, Acts twenty-two fourteen through 15. And he said, the God of our ancestors has appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear the words from his mouth, since you will be a witness for him to all people of what you have seen and heard. So friends, these words that were spoken to Paul are also written for us. We have been appointed to know his will and he reveals his will through his word and through his Holy Spirit. Are we listening? We might not have the radical salvation story of Paul. I had a pretty radical one myself, but we have our own unique salvation story. And it is so we will also be a witness of what we have seen and heard. So others might know God, his all all encompassing love and forgiveness and all can be saved. And so I think, or so that people can be saved. When I look back at my salvation story and I see sometimes I think I I would drift into this I'm saved praise the Lord kumbaya we go to church and we get into the routine of things but there is this mission we're to stay on friends we're to be listening daily to God where am I to go and witness this was how Paul was he was seeking God's face I'm to go to Jerusalem I'm to do this He was all about God's mission, and he was also a tent maker. And so we may say, well, we're kind of busy. You know, we're not exactly called to go like to Timbuktu right now (laughs) and witness. Well, what does God have you to do right now where you're at? I feel like we need to be more missionally minded with every single breath we have, every single day we have. God, where are you sending me today? You know, even to uh, whatever store we go to, whatever errands we have, there can be a mission right there. Are we listening to the Holy Spirit? Final application. God deposited his Holy Spirit within us so we can hear directly from him. Don't doubt the voice of God in your life. Confirm it with God's word. And there's also people who will speak into your life. Small group, your pastor, other leaders who will speak into your life. But you should always confirm it with God's word and going to God yourself. No one else is supposed to hear from God for you. They can hear from God and share things with you. But pray and listen. God is speaking.